the full burn packages. Okay. We do, do you want him to do it on the additions? Or do you want him to just ask at the community update? Okay. Uh, the community update. Okay. Just ask for the additions and update. Okay. Right. Uh, I think those are I call this meeting of the Rocky Mountain City Council to order. Um, as you can see, I'm not the mayor, but the mayor's not here, so unfortunately you get me, and I'll do the best and ask for forgiveness. So um, uh, I would ask you to uh, stand and bow your heads for a moment of silent prayer or, or meditation. Okay, thank you. I will ask for the city clerk to call the roll, please. Councilmember Knight? Here. Blackwell? Here. Joyner? Here. TJ Walker? Here. Daltridge? Here. Harris? Here. Javaris Walker? Here. Um, consideration of minutes of the regularly scheduled city council meeting. Uh, looking for approval or Motion for held November 13th, 2023. So, second. Motion by Donnie Joyner, Joyner and second by Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Uh, considerations of additions or deletions to the agenda or motion uh, as presented? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. Um, before we get to the community update, I would like to recognize, I think we do have uh, our sheriff from Nash County here, Sheriff Stone. Thank you for coming. Appreciate you. Um, we're going to have a community update now by City Manager Keith Rogers. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Good evening, everyone. On this Friday, April the 12th at 7.30 p.m. at our Imperial Center, Gretchen and the Grudge will take the stage. So to purchase tickets, please visit imperialcenter.org backslash theater. Also, the Rocky Mount community is invited to show off their movie making spill skills at the 48 hour film festival. Uh, this kickoff event will be held on Friday, April the 19th at 3 p.m. also at the Imperial Center. And at the same location on Sunday, April 21st at 4 p.m., the premiere event will be held. So for more information, you can visit imperialcenter.org backslash theater. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Are there any questions? Yes. Mr. Knight, uh, Councilman Knight, excuse me, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, City Manager, update on the four uh, burned up houses that haven't come to the council for approval for demolition. Have those houses uh, gone through the process as of today? Thank you, Councilman Knight. Yes, sir. From the last council meeting, the motion that was approved, the staff is moving forward uh, with the process for those houses. Uh, so I believe that's been about 13 days ago. So yes, sir, all of the properties are moving forward with their enforcement process. All right. So by the, they will be on the agenda the next council meeting. I can't tell you when that will be, but uh, they are all moving forward per last council's motion. Could you tell me how many have gone, completed the process? <laughs> Only four. Can staff answer that? Well, no, sir, Councilman. I, I don't have any additional information. Uh, as I stated, all of the properties are moving forward per council's motion at the last council meeting. So I can, I can tell you that they are in process. Could you inform the council this week where are the houses in the process? Yes, sir. Okay. And my second uh, uh, concern, uh, when would the Good Neighbor Award, I call it Good Neighbor Award, I think it's a Good Neighbor, it's called Neighbor Award, would be presented to Ms. Natalie O'Ree for Ward 1? I can include uh, an update on that in the correspondence to Council this week as well, Councilman. Thank you. Okay, any other questions for the manager? 
All right, seeing none, we're going to move on to the presentations and recognitions. And um, the first one's exciting. And um, again, I do ask for forgiveness because I've got four uh, presentations and uh, resolutions to read. So uh, uh, we're going to begin with the uh, what we're going to read this resolution. And I'm going to ask for the city council uh, a motion to approve that. But I'm going to read it first. Uh, resolution congratulating Rocky Mountain High School senior Kaylee Eggers on winning the North Carolina High School Athletic Association Class 3A State Championship 200-yard individual medley. Whereas Kaylee Eggers, a Rocky Mountain High School senior, competed in the North Carolina High School Athletic Association Class 3A Swimming and Diving State Championship in Cary, and whereas Kaylee won the 200-yard individual medley with a time of two minutes, nine seconds, two, 209.77, edging out her closest competitor by 1.68 seconds. And whereas Kaylee is the first ever Rocky Mountain High School swimmer to win a state title, and whereas in her four years as a Griffon, Kaylee has broken school records in the 100-yard breaststroke, 100-yard backstroke, 100 butterfly, 200 individual medley, and 500 freestyle, and whereas Kaylee is a conference champion and holds conference records in the 100 backstroke, 100 butterfly, 200 individual medley, and 500 freestyle. And whereas Kaylee, Kaylee's win has brought Rocky Mountain High School its first ever swimming state championship. And whereas contributing to Kaylee's success were her coaches, family, and friends that have supported her throughout the years. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Mayor C. Saunders Robertson, Jr. and the Rocky Mount City Council hereby congratulate Kaylee Eggers and her outstanding season, record-holding accomplishments, and history-making championship win, and be it further resolved that this resolution shall be spread upon the pages of the minutes of this proceeding and a copy shall be pre presented to Kaylee Eggers in recognition of her significant accomplishments. And I'm asking for a motion to approve, motion by Councilman Joyner and a second by, second by uh, Councilman Knight. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So adopted on this eighth day of April uh, 2024, I ask that Kaylee come forward and also ask for uh, this audience and this city council to recognize her with a, a huge round of applause. Can my council do me a favor and slide one down? So there we go, keep going. So I have Councilmember Walker there. There we go, that's a little better on the balance. Wonderful. Everybody will on me, please. In three, two, one. We'll do it one more time. Three, two, one. Hold one second. Do I have a parent in here who wants to take the, do the parents want to take the photo? I'm not a parent. Okay, you're good. You're here. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Hey, son. Nice to see you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Boy. <laughs> 
and she just told me that she is going to go to Old Dominion on a scholarship for, for swimming. So uh, that's awesome. Congratulations. So we've, we've got uh, three presentations of uh, proclamations, and I'll uh, read through these as well. Um, proclamation of the City of Rocky Mount, whereas April 2023 20, marks the 56th anniversary of the Federal Fair Housing Act of 1968 and the 41st anniversary of the State Fair Housing Act of 1983, and whereas the State Fair Housing Act of 1983, the Federal Fair Housing Act of 1968, and the Rocky Mount Fair Housing Ordinance prohibits discrimination in housing due to race, color, religion, sex, nationality, handicap, or familial status, and whereas all North Carolinians have the right to live in the community of their choice without fear and on the same terms as their neighbors, and whereas the Rocky Mount Human Relations Commission, through coordinated efforts with the North Carolina Human Relations Commission Fair Housing Organization, concerned citizens in the housing industry promotes broader housing choices in Rocky Mount, understanding of the State Fair Housing Act and the Federal Fair Housing Act to encourage integrated communities and or neighborhoods and works to ensure accessible housing for the disabled and to eliminate discrimination in housing. Now therefore, uh, C. Saunders Robertson, Mayor of the City of Rocky Mount, hereby proclaims April 2024 as the Fair Housing Month in the City of Rocky Mount and, com and commend its observance of all citizens. In witness, whereas uh, he laid that seal on today, it was done earlier, uh, C. Saunders Robertson, and I think we've got um, uh, Fair Archie Jones, uh, Human Relations Director. Uh, come on up, Archie, and City Council, if y'all come down or get behind. Archie does a lot for the city. <laughs> Then we're going to do now the presentation or proclamation proclaiming the month of April as Community Development Month uh, to the Department of Community Development. I think Stephanie Taylor is going to. Uh, so, okay. And, and the rest of the department. So, okay. Whereas the week of April 1st through 5th, 2024, has been designated the National Community Development Week by the National Community Development Association to celebrate the Federal Community Development Block Grant known in the 49th year in the Home Investment Partnership Home Program now in the 32nd year, and whereas the CDBG program provides annual funding and flexibility to local communities to provide decent, safe, and affordable housing, a suitable living environment, economic opportunities, low income persons, and down payment assistance, and whereas the Home Program provides funding to local communities to create decent, safe, and affordable housing opportunities for low income persons, and whereas activities such as the construction of the Bill Street Square Apartments, Madison Place Apartments, Ravenwood Crossing, Vance Street Homes, and single family home rehabs have been funded by Home and CDBG, and whereas the CDBG and Home Funding Programs have made tremendous contributions to the viability of the housing stock, public services, and the economic vitality of the Rocky Mount community. Now therefore, C. Saunders Robertson, Jr. Mayor of the City of Rocky Mount, proclaims April 2024 as the Community Development Month in the City of Rocky Mount in support of both CDBG and home funding programs and in cooperation with the Fair Housing Month held April 1 through 30th, 2024 and encourage all citizens to support community development activity throughout the year because vibrant communities provide the foundation for a high quality of life for residents. So if we could have the uh, community development staff come down and, and I'll present some more to you. Thank you.
houses. I did. Did you want to tell this group about that real quick? Well, I sent you all an email about our activity for this month, and something that I really pointed out was our tour of homes. The 26th and the 27th, we want you to be part of that. So if you'll read that and give us a call and let us know if you can come, we would appreciate it. It shows you what we have done. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, we got to switch out. Right now, I got all the hype. I encourage one of y'all to question. I encourage you to question. Your five rights, small. Can you give me just one second? Let me step back. I get this group right here on the front. Come forward just a little bit more. Y'all got some snacks in this little room. All right. All right, everybody ready? All right. And on me in three, two, one, three, two, one. Thank you. You got somewhere behind you. Behind me? I'm so sorry. Come on through, sir. Good. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Do I? Come here. I got one more. Okay. <laughs> Unless you, did you want to say something real quick? I do what? About the award. This next one. The one you just did. Okay, go ahead, Councilman Knight. I just want to also acknowledge um, another staff person. She's not here. Um, Cornelius McGee, who has been very instrumental with the uh, community development and the housing program. Uh, I've been here for quite a while, and I know she has, and I think Jason, have helped a lot of people uh, along with the other staff that was recognized. I do want to let the uh, record and the minutes reflect um, that she was a part of that and that he was a part of that, and that cannot go unrecognized um, and let it be known that Cornelius McGee and Jason, what is, I forgot Jason last name. Dawkins, Dawkins uh, was a part of this team. Thank you. Okay, we have one more presentation. This is a proclamation proclaiming the month of April 2024 as Child Abuse Prevention Month. And I'm gonna present this to Robert Hassel, Chief of Police, and along with any other police that would like to be in the uh, picture. But uh, proclamation of Sea Rocky Mount, whereas all children deserve safe, stable, nurturing homes and communities, they need to foster their healthy growth and development. And whereas the preventing child abuse and neglect is a community responsibility affecting both the current and future quality of life of of a community and whereas the communities that provide families with the social support, knowledge of parenting and child development and concrete resources they need to cope with the stress and nurture their children, ensure all children grow to their full potential and whereas child abuse and neglect are preventable and all communities benefit when children, families and caregivers are well supported and whereas effective child abuse prevention strategies succeed because of partnerships created among citizens, human services agencies, schools, faith communities, health care providers, civic organizations, law enforcement agencies, and the business community. Now therefore, C. Saunders Robertson, by virtue of the authority vested into him as mayor of the city of Rocky Mount, proclaims the month of April 2024 as Child Abuse Prevention Month in Rocky Mount and encouraging all citizens to increase their participation in efforts to support families, thereby preventing child abuse and strengthening the communities in which we live. All right, Chief Hassel, along with your... Uh, 
you, you don't have it today. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now we're going to move on to the petitions from the public and I will call the names of those who have completed the form requesting to speak in order as I receive them. First I need to read the public petitions that I believe um, is handed out with the, uh, the uh, agenda. Um, this, the public petitions portion of the City Council meeting is an opportunity for the public comment and the City Council appreciates your attendance and values all citizens input. This is an opportunity to express views and concerns about the City of Rocky Mount to the Council. However, in most cases, Council members will not respond to public comments, but may refer a matter to the City Manager or staff for follow-up. Time will be monitored in order to give everyone an opportunity to speak, and speakers will have three minutes. Please be aware that sign-in sheets must be presented to the security officer prior to the opening of the City Council meeting. If an organized group is present to speak on a common issue, please designate one person to present the group's comments. If your comments are in regard to an item that is the subject of a public hearing, please wait until that item is introduced to speak. Time will also be monitored. If your comments are in regard to an evidentiary hearing, additional time may be granted. The City Council requests that you please adhere to the following guidelines. Um, if I've got your name and you've already completed the sign-in sheet, address comments to the Council as a whole and not to individual Council members or City staff. Speak from the podium in a civil, non-argumentative, and respectful manner. Personal attacks which have the potential to disrupt the meeting will not be tolerated and you will be asked to sit down or be removed from the meeting. Keep comments to three minutes. <clears throat> the first person I'm going to ask to come up is re has requested to come is Ms. Natalie O'Ree. Ms. O'Ree. Good afternoon, Mayor Pro Tem, City Manager, City Council members, clerk, yes. attorney, and everybody present today. On last week, I received news that there was going to be a meeting here in the council room. And so when I tuned in to the meeting, I learned that we are supposed to receive about $5.4 million for the replacement of gas pipes in the underserved areas of Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. Now, this sounded really, really good. Um, however, uh, I'm trying to understand why citizens were not allowed to come into the building when they came to the meeting. You know, if we're gonna have something this big that's affecting the community, why are the citizens not even allowed to come into the meeting. And I believe one of the state officials asked why there was not a larger crowd, but some people were turned around at the door. Also, <clears throat> um, it was stated in the evening telegram that the funding for the replacement of the gas lines only in underserved areas of downtown and then I believe in the presentation Wednesday, it was designated that they would be uh, allocated to the downtown west and sunset west ridge areas. And I would like some clarification as to how that's an underserved community. Also, what is going to be done to the Edgecombe side of Rocky Mount because they need new pipelines also. Is there something in this offer that can be extended to um, the Edgecombe side of 
Rocky Mount, North Carolina. And therefore, I would also like to request a copy of the actual application for a, with a project map so that I can have a better understanding of the service project area and the timeline for completion. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> the question. Yes. Uh, were, I guess we asked city manager, were people turned away from the press conference that we know of? <coughs> Councilman, I'm not aware of anyone being turned away, uh, but City Hall is a public building. And so it's open to the public as long as it's open. Uh, I was at the press conference briefly, and I did see some citizens there, but I'm not aware of anyone being turned away. Thank you. And my second one, the Rest Ridge area, um, what are we considering underserved areas or communities? Councilman, I, I think after the public comment, well, I don't have to press this, I forgot. Um, I think after the public, I had the same questions, and I have a response, and I'd like to, to read it after the public comment. Um, next speaker is going to be Dr. Koo. So you're saying we can talk after public comment? Sure. No, he okay. said he was going. Good afternoon. Afternoon. Every home in Rocky, every home owner in Rocky Mount recently received a revaluation of their property. Suddenly, your property is worth more than you believe. So, what is a revaluation? According to Rosenet.org, a revaluation is a program undertaken periodically to adjust the value of all properties in the municipality to 100% of the market value, meaning what an owner should be able to sell the property for. What would be the outcome of such revaluations? Number one, if the value of your property goes up, the property taxes goes up, and both city and county will collect more money from you. Nash County already said that it will see a 40% increase in the county revenue. Number two, in real numbers, if you live in the Nash side of Rocky Mount, combining the two rates, you'll be responsible for $1.355 for every $100 of property value. For example, if you own a home value at $200,000, you currently pay $2,710 in taxes in total. If your house revalue jump up to $400,000, then your new taxes will be $5,420. If you live in the Ashcombe site of, the, of Rocky Mount, your current rate is now $1.635 per $100 property value. Your taxes for a $200,000 home is $3,270 in total. And if your value, if the revalue of your home is now $400,000, you'll be paying $6,540 a year. Number three, since the market value of every home is increased, how can people afford homes anymore? Buying a house is not only onerous, but maintaining one is even more difficult. The housing crisis in both counties will exacerbate. The homeless population will soar exponentially as renters automatically pass on the raises to their tenants. Number four, we are told that you can appeal the revaluation, but in my heart, I know nothing much will change. The city and the county will get their pound of flesh. Number five, lastly, this kind of double dipping where you pay two taxes for one property is not sustainable. As wages have not increased commensurately and folks have to pay for social services like health care or housing previously subsidized by cities, counties and the state. Many of the services are increasingly given away to private companies which give less service for more money and less accountable to the public. At the federal level, our tax dollars are frittered away in supporting genocide and imperialist wars. This form of cannibalizing on us cannot continue. We will see a rise in social unrest sooner or later. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kuhn. Next speaker will be M Mumtaz Sh Sheikh. And I, I know I... You said it well. Okay, well, I ask for forgiveness. First time anybody said it right. Oh, really? Thank you. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, council members, ladies and gentlemen, 
The world's richest country is caught in a humanitarian crisis of incredible proportions with few solutions in sight. The housing dilemma is critical with 181,000 homeless people in California, 103,000 in New York and 25,000 in Washington DC to name a few states. Housing, a basic human need, however, has never been adequately funded and housing plans not consistently implemented in a timely manner thanks to decades of division among federal, state and city officials, stalling tactics and utter indifference towards black and brown majority victims, the most vulnerable viewed also as the most expendable. Until housing is available and affordable, the streets, parks and bridges will become the acceptable assigned waiting rooms for this unfortunate population. This is not acceptable. This is not good governance. Good governance is meeting the needs of everyone equally, especially the neediest. Contrast this with the position of the Singapore government in confronting poverty and homelessness. In the, in the 60s, this island state of 1.3 million people was a crime-ridden slum with gangsters running free and citizens on opium until the government under Prime Minister Lee embarked on an ambitious public housing project to provide its citizens comprising Chinese, Malays and Indians equal access, yes, equal access to clean, safe, and well-maintained affordable public housing. The government became the sole land developer, cutting out public, private land developers to put people above profits. By year 2000, Singapore became one of the few nations in the world to achieve almost full home ownership status and more than 90% of its citizens own their homes. Recognizing the value of human capital, Lee provided Singaporeans with training for a variety of skills while funding infrastructure for banking, shipping and oil industries for job creation. Today, among other things, Singapore is one of the world's richest countries and second largest port with 2.7% unemployment and third safest country in the world. Its citizens enjoy world-class healthcare and education and, get this, test highest in the world consistently for science and math. How's that for good governance and ex exceptionalism, ex exceptionalism, sorry. Singapore is a man-made success story showcasing the importance of government planning and support in rooting out poverty and homelessness to promote socio-economic improvement and stability. Singapore has one lesson for us. Our, for, our forever wars should focus on housing. It is Thank doable you. and winnable. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next speaker is uh, Celeste Beatty. Good evening, Good council evening. members, distinguished individuals. I don't know all the titles, but thank you. <laughs> um, yes, uh, I have a letter that I'd like to read, obviously very quickly, from quite a number of amazing business owners, advocates, and stakeholders, mostly in the downtown area. I'm going to read it. Um, this is uh, connected to um, our effort to find ways to creatively help uplift the community through the arts and culture, and also um, public-private partnerships. So here we go. Dear city leaders, we, the undersigned stakeholders, are united in our vision to transform Howard and Church Street along with the 100 block of Sunset Avenue into a vibrant art district that serves a beacon of creativity, community, and economic revitalization, a new Rocky Mount destination. Our collective ambition is to see this area thrive not only as a hub for artists and creatives, but also to enrich our city and its residents. With over 20 buildings on Howard Street, Church Street, and the 100 block of Sunset Avenue, whose owners are willing to dedicate their spaces to the art district, we have a significant and rare opportunity. This unprecedented commitment from property owners underscores the transformative potential of this initiative and the community's dedication. The proposed art district is poised to leverage the power of art and culture as catalysts for social and economic transformation. We aim to create an environment that fosters artistic expression, 
nurtures emerging talent, and draws both visitors and locals. To realize this vision, we respectfully request that the City Council make the Art District a priority and direct staff to implement the following actions. Enhance streetscapes and public spaces. Invest in making the de designated Art District area more pedestrian friendly and visually appealing, conductive, conducive to public art and gatherings. Provide financial in incentives, encourage property renovation and the support of art-related businesses with grants, low to no interest rate loans and other financial mechanisms. Hire a de dedicated grant writer. During this uh, three months of hiring a dedicated downtown grant writer, she secured $875,000 for the city. This engagement yielded approximately 4,061.9% return on an investment of $21,000. Significantly underscoring the importance of reenacting this role, facilitate access to affordable capital, collaborate with local financial institutions to tailor loan programs for downtown property owners and creative businesses. Implement supportive policies. Adopt and modify policies to foster the growth of the art district, streamlining permitting processes, enhancing security me measures. Engage in collaborative marketing and promotion. Ms. And you can read the rest. We've emailed this to you. So as you can see, there's a lot of work to be done. We look forward to working with all of you. Thank you, Ms. Bay. Do you mind handing that copy to uh, Assistant City Manager Elton Daniel? Or is that okay? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. That way we can have a copy for the records. Um, okay. Um, AK as, as a motor? Did I, did I do that one okay? It's Eki. Eki, I'm sorry. You you actually phonetically spelled it out. and yeah. it's well, like Becky without the B. Okay. Good well, evening, everyone, good city evening. council members, and hope everyone is doing well. I am Eki Asemota, and I'm a dance artist who recently moved here from this beautiful city of Rocky Mount. Today, I want to advocate my support for the establishment of an art district in downtown Rocky Mount. When I heard of the vision of an art district, I was moved to bring my talents to contribute to it. So I felt pulled to start dance classes right away. My studio on Howard Street is in the heart of where we envisioned the art district. A once desolate block, but through the power of dance, we're bringing a little light to the space and want more artists to be a part of it. Weekly, I teach what's called the joy of dance to all ages, from kids to seniors. With over 20 years of experience in the arts, I've led over 40 sessions in less than a year, including a magical Motown production at the Imperial Center last month. I have to shout out the Juneteenth Empowerment Committee who showcased an amazing cast of local talent, which is why an art district will give an opportunity for more performances on a consistent basis. Our Motown show truly impacted and changed first-time dancers by boosting their confidence on stage. It was amazing for me to see shy dancers who've never performed before stepping up, surprising everyone doing splits on stage, solos, and their growth and the light I saw in their faces have been remarkable, and they're eager for more. We rehearsed for months, and I got to see the dancers truly blossom on stage to a packed audience and a standing ovation. It was a touching experience of what arts can do to the soul, and some of my dancers and parents are here tonight, so I'm gonna have them stand up. Thank you for being here. An art district will continue to nurture talent, boost confidence, revitalize downtown, and provide tourist attraction. It will be a space for positive change and community transformation. We envision yearly themed events such as fashion shows, movie night, film productions, dance festival, creative events around holidays like Christmas, Black History Month, um, Women's History Month, Juneteenth, Kwanzaa, St. Patrick's Day, and so on, providing an opportunity for Rocky Mount's own artists and entrepreneurs to showcase their talent. It's a win-win situation. I'm deeply grateful for this opportunity to speak before you today, and I, I'm looking forward to work with the city to turn this vision of an art district into reality. For those of you who missed our debut dance production, I invite you to experience the video on Downtown Care Facebook group. 
you're gonna watch the video. Excuse my screaming and yelling as you watch the video. I was really excited and proud of my dancers. And to learn more, you can check out some of our work on Spotlight on Downtown Rocky Mount. And thank you for your time and support in creating a vibrant art district. Thank you. Um, Mr. Charles Robertson. Good evening. I have to follow that? Wow. I'm an advocate for downtown development. Um, last time I was here discussing downtown, I brought a letter with over 20 signatures for um, downtown stakeholders. Personally, I invested heavily in downtown, create 18 units of affordable apartments. From having boots on the ground, I learned that we need a coordinated effort. It's not enough just to have a few people renovating their buildings um, with neighboring blight. That's why I'm excited about item 9A on the consent agenda, proposing a no interest revolving loan for energy efficiency. Let's do that for energy and let's keep that same energy and use that model for downtown revitalization. High interest rates and inflation and a lack of a robust market make downtown investment difficult. However, a no interest loan in our toolkit, toolkit could be a game changer. Baltimore, um, they enacted a $52 million neighborhood impact fund offering a 30-year loan at zero interest to advance their priorities. They show us that it's possible. This tool could allow us to renovate blocks of buildings, removing blight and making a market for development to help us reach critical mass. This fund can help in developing the proposed art district that everyone is talking about and could extend to businesses and affordable housing developers. We need to think big. I know this council, with their nearly $17 million investment in land, show that we can make significant moves. A similar investment in, re in a revolving loan fund could transform down downtown landscape, betting on our people and on our future. The numbers show that a renovated downtown building appreciate at about 300%. I personally seen some appraised at 1,000% more after renovation. Imagine what that can do for our tax base. I fought for a downtown grant writer that Councilman Knight and TJ Walker helped, helped me secure. She was hired on a three month contract. Within that three months, she brought in $875,000 for our city from a $21,000 investment. Like Celeste said, that's a 4,061.9% return. At um, the February council meeting, Councilman Knight proposed actionable steps to be added to the Black History um, Proclamation. I hope tonight we can adopt those and have a, a robust discussion on how we can use this no interest revolving loan to advance our city priorities. Let's make it happen. Thank you. And the next I'd ask uh, Laquan Phillips to please. Hello. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm up here just to um, see if there, because uh, I came a couple of months ago and um, talked with uh, the city manager, and I've also been in communications with um, um, individual council members, individual I haven't gotten to everybody, but I've been making my rounds, and I've been speaking with um, Mr. Blackwell's son over at OIC about seeing what we can do as a city and as um, a community to support sickle cell awareness and as well as, you know, other nonprofits in the, in the, in the city. That's All right. Thank you. Um, MJ Bryant. Good evening, my name is Josiah Bryant, AKA MJ. I appreciate that. <laughs> I want to speak on behalf of the Motown show and how it inspired me to keep dancing and performing. But first I want to thank the band director at Rockin' My High School for, for everything he have done, Mr. Jolly Manor. He helped me for everything, for performing, becoming a great performer I am today. I am, and with the Rockin' My High School band and performing MJ in the band concerts. The Motown show helped me experience old school music and 
and while performing, it inspired me to keep going and to never give up on my dreams. The Bowtown Show inspired others to overcome their fears of being on stage and to show their great talent. I am in full support of bringing an art district to downtown Rocky Mount for me and other children like me to share their talents. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Mayor Pro Tim. I think yes. he's called MJ because I think you played the King of Pop, and he did a really good job. Y'all look at him. Y'all look at him one more time. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he had that little kick right on point, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Do what? I don't have it for. Thank you. Uh, I'd ask Lane, Lane Jones to please come forward. Also, think getting up in public and speaking is a is a huge accomplishment as well. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, good afternoon, um, Councilman, um, Mayor Pro Tem, City Manager. My name is Lynn Jones, and I'm a small business owner downtown Rocky Mount. Um, Unfortunately, um, I had submitted some information to get my CO, and um, so I was informed um, during my CO that I had needed to get an additional bathroom. So, um, so once I got the information, the failure notices, um, I put it in a, di a dispute into um, to inspections to um, what's his name, Justin. So I put that dispute in with him. His reply was that I needed, since I was unhappy with my response from him and the failure notice, that he suggested that I get an architect. Um, so keeping in mind that I did pass the zoning and I did pass the fire marshals part of the um, application process. So on December the 20th, I was informed um, that, uh, that I had to get a, um, a, um, an architect. So I reached out to a local company and I shared the information that I was given to by inspections um, to the firm. So after um, the firm had um, taken my case and they had came to the um, and to the establishment and doing a lot of calculations, measurements, all hours of the night. And as a matter of fact, they brought a whole team, which I was very appreciative that they didn't um, put that charge to me. So, according to all the local laws and state codes, the architect had submitted all of her findings in the um, in the um, in the process. So, with that being said, I'm not sure um, how is it that an inspector can oh, because he still denied the the information from the architect firm a 30-year architect and a Fortune 500 company. I'm not sure what kind of um, power that the Office of Inspections have, but I was informed to get the architect and because of the results did not come back favorable to inspections, um, I'm still suffering from that. Um, so ever since November, I have lost approximately $40,000 in revenue for my business. And I don't know if anybody in here can afford to lose $40,000 in, in um, six months. Um, that's my first concern. And my second concern is that, um, so I, I just want someone to see if they could assist me in researching this. Um, I, this company is based out of Rocky Mount in Miami, Florida. Um, and like I said, it's a Fortune 500 company. And so my second concern is that um, I recently got a, um, in the mail Friday a um, utility bill. So in two... Yes. Ms. Jones, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, if fine. you could maybe give your information to Assistant City Manager, I will. and um, we'll, we'll follow back up with you. Thank you for coming to speak to us tonight. Um, and the last speaker tonight is Nakia Richardson. Hello. Hi, everyone, and everyone here tonight. I'm not a great public speaker, so pardon. 
So my name is Nakia, and I am an investor um, in Rocky Mount. I'm a new investor. I have um, investments in Raleigh as well, and I just recently moved back to North Carolina. So when I first came to Rocky Mount, I thought it was such a great city, and it moved me to invest in it. And um, with investing, I think that this place has a great um, opportunity for growth, and I love that you guys have the sports tourism, that's awesome, but it also needs like places for people to go. I know everyone kind of knows that already, but what I see is like that we would love to see like downtown be more, you know, walkable. And I think that the art district proposal will be awesome for that. Um, and I see that as a great opportunity to um, grow the downtown. Um, I also think that from being like a television producer, like Rocky Mountain itself needs like some rebranding, especially downtown, like rebranding it for everybody. I'm not sure what that would be, but rebranding it would be a great thing. Rebranding is everything. Social media is everything. So it would be a great opportunity to like rebrand Rocky Mount, making it for everyone. So everyone would want to reinvest in downtown as well. Um, and as an investor, I want to also like be able to create housing with the properties that I have um, invested in, but the issues that I'm having, I got an architect, I did the work, but and I had my meetings, but when I try to get lending and when I try to get funding, the numbers don't number. So that's, you know, I guess everyone is really having those issues. So I wanted to um, just be here and be an advocate for the, um, the art district for downtown, and I think that would be an awesome idea. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. We appreciate your investment in Rocky Mount. Thank you. Um, that's the end of the uh, public petitions. I think, Councilman Blackwell, you... Yeah, thank you. Well, you said you had a statement to make. I wasn't here. I was out of town on just, um, for the uh, press release, right. um, but I had received phone calls and right. emails and text messages about uh, people not having access, first of all, and I take umbrage. This is public facility, public intent, public investment. People should yeah. be allowed, so I don't know what happened there. And then the second question that I had was um, related to um, the actual grant itself. Um, did we apply for a grant? Did we say that those areas that were um, funded for new gas lines, uh, needed gas lines, and who said West Ridge was um, an underserved community? And not trying to be funny, but we got 14 that are documented with, with statistics and um, real life examples, and I'm not, um, I'm happy for the investment, let me say that. I'm happy that we could get any amount of money from anywhere to help us uh, build our city better. I'm not happy about branding a community that's clearly middle class and upper middle class underserved. I don't know what it would be underserved in. And perhaps if we had some backstory, um, because I'm sure the, you know, the politicians from D.C. don't know Rocky right. Mount intimately. They know we need and they know we vote. Right. You know? <laughs> so that's a wise thing mm -hmm. to invest with us. But um, we should know our own needs sure. um, more than anybody else. So that, that's the comment I just wanted to make. Well, just since, since you've asked that, I again had to step in for the mayor. He was um, not able to attend. And so I, had a, I did step in and along with Councilman Harris and Councilman Joyner, well, Councilman Joyner. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, we were we were here for for that, and and I do recall, um, as the manager um, indicated, I, I saw several citizens here. I didn't. Um, we had several staff, and we also had the city of Wilson. The Rocky Mount was not the only city that received some of the funding, um, but uh, you know, I knew this was become an issue, so I asked um, the question about, you know. Why over in while on Sunset in Westridge and not over in so let me just read in, in, in February 2010 the federal code regulating the natural gas industry was modified to mandate that operators must assess their distribution system and prioritize pipe replacement prior projects based on risk. 
Risk factors include, but are not limited to age of pipe, size of the pipe, material type, and leak history. Rocky Mount's risk assessment that was developed as mandated found that two inch steel mains installed a pre-1980 and black plastic services installed pre-1980 were our highest risk infrastructure. Our assessment also found the majority of the high risk pipe was in Edgecombe County. As a result of our assessment, we began an intensive two inch steel main replacement program in Edgecombe around 2010. The results are as follows. Since the start of this program, we have replaced approximately 28 miles of two inch main along the associated black plastic services. To date, there is approximately seven miles of two inch steel main in Edgecombe County. To date, there is approximately 44 miles of two inch main in Nash County. At the completion of this grant project, we will have approximately 34 miles of two inch main in Nash County. Um, and there is a map that we can we have access to can get and so then that, that's Edgecombe Rocky Mount. Yeah, all this is at right all this is Rocky Mount, the Edgecombe side, Nash County since it was brought up. Um, and the grant is funding pipe replacement in Nash County because there is very little two inch main remaining in Edgecombe County. As a result, the assessment now shows the high risk infrastructure has now shifted to mains in Nash County. So I think the city, to its credit, recognized a need in 2010, and that was over 14 years ago, and started going in, in Edgecombe County where the need, and there's still a need, seven miles, um, in, but in Nash County, there's 44 miles, and this grant, I think, is going to take care of 10 miles, and if I remember correctly, I don't have the press release that I, that I read, or the, what I read in front of me, but I think... Um, that 10 miles was going to take 20 years to replace. Now we're cutting it down, I think, uh, Mr. Manager, to 39 months. So that, that's, I'm grateful that this money's coming in. Uh, Rocky Mount's getting a little less than 5.5 million. Wilson was getting a little over 3 million. Both communities in Eastern North Carolina, I think it's awesome that, that it was a bipartisan infrastructure. I think it's awesome that we're coming in. Uh, Rocky Mount, I don't care what side of Rocky Mount you live on, there's need in all sides, uh, sections, and I agree with you, Councilman Blackwell, um, certain sides or certain areas have more need than, than others. So I think the, the issue really comes down to safety. There, there's, more, there's more pipe that is eroded and needs to be replaced, and that's why the areas were chosen. And then, one thing that we cannot forget, this then frees up future funding for other parts of Rocky Mount, whether it's that existing seven miles, or after this is done, the existing 34 miles. So, and, 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 I, and I think this brings up a good point. We talk about one Rocky Mount, but then we always go back to talking about Edgecombe side of Rocky Mount, Nash side of Rocky Mount. It's, it's all one Rocky Mount, and if there's need in any section of Rocky Mount, there's a need in all of Rocky Mount. And I think as soon as we come together as a community and recognize that, the better off we'll be. And, and I think this just is representative of what the city um, strategically went into Edgecombe County and replaced the pipe that needed to be replaced. So I did ask that question, and that was the response that, that I did receive. But so my question. What, what is your question, Which Councilman? Which was the, the original question. Uh, is West Ridge, West Ridge an underserved uh, area? And I, and I thank you for the backdrop. But even if uh, that much piping was replaced in the Edgecombe side of Rocky Mount, which is desperately needed, then uh, where are the underserved areas in the Nash side? And surely, if it's in the South Rocky Mount, the Little Raleigh, um, I forgot the other area near uh, off Hunter Hill Road, surely um, Swellerton Heights, those areas, surely uh, I think those areas meets the qualification more so than Red Ridge. So going back to my original question, what are the underserved areas in the Nash side of Rocky Mount that needs replacing of the gas line? And it's surely if West Ridge is outdated, those are probably, probably there's no pipes at all in those areas. So that's the question, and we need to ask staff that 
what are the areas in the NAS side that uh, Councilman Blackwell has stated uh, in those 14 underserved communities. Uh, and those areas should be look, be prioritized first uh, before we move to Rest Ridge. Uh, uh, so can we ask city manager to get that information well, from? Um, um, I, we can ask, I think we can ask for more clarification, but I think after the response I received, it was assessed that this right, this particular. Enough. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. No. I like to see it for myself. No, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm no, not saying. Just that I'm not. I'm not disputing you, Lodge. I'm thankful that you have some more information. What I also am asking, though, sometimes priorities are set, mm -hmm. um, and what I like to know is how the priorities were set for the capacity of where growth is or where growth will occur? And are we just replacing what was already, you know, damaged or worn out? And why is there that disparity in numbers of miles between the two different counties? And so for, for people who are vested in all of Rocky Mount as I am, you know, um, my eyes still see what they see and the people's lived experiences who live in neighborhoods and communities that do not have the same level of infrastructure as other communities. Nobody is asking anyone to give anything that they should not have. What we also are asking, however, if we know that there has been intentional historical neglect and disinvestment, then as we are building our pathway to the future, we'd like to see infrastructure placed in growth opportunity corridors. We want to reevaluate what we're trying to rebuild our inner city communities to uh, welcome new folk and to take care of the capacity within our own communities to stay in those neighborhoods because everybody doesn't want to move. You heard earlier somebody talked about the increase in tax rates and that's very, very real. Uh, but when you're trying to consider, do you add on to your house or do you just go find another house somewhere else? And our gas lines already there, equipping, a, have capacity to be able to handle a significant uh, renovation. Um, does that exist within all of Rocky Mount? Um, and are there still areas that need attention in infrastructure development? This, that, yeah. that's, what, that's what I'm asking. So to see the actual you know, grant talk with the department head so that we can understand whatever their philosophy is and to help us together chart a course and a pathway so we can better help our federal friends who got all the money Got all our money, <laughs> you know, to make it's, sure it's our, it's our, our money. It's yeah. our money. That's coming back said. to us. So let's make sure that it comes back in an equitable manner, wherever that may be. Okay. How about this, Mr. Manager? In addition to this, maybe at a future um, committee of the whole, we, we have Chris Special and his team give a presentation um, on this and. Um, any other infrastructure needs that we have. And I know we've gone through some assessments and we've, um, and, and that's a need out of every city in, in, the, in the United States is infrastructure needs. But if we can have a presentation on that, it's, it's timely with the budget coming up. Um, and I think we all know that, <clears throat> that the uh, needs exceed any budgets. So we welcome any grants that we can, we can get. So is that, would that satisfy everyone? Uh, Councilman Harris? A little bit different, excuse me, a little bit different topic, but this in, uh, is in regards to all citizens of Rocky Mount, those who live in Edgecon, those who live in Nash, and it's been mentioned briefly. We're going to be soon work, work on the 24-25 budget. I am very concerned about the tax valuation increase that all of us have seen, and I think it's going to be incumbent upon the council members working closely with city staff to challenge what our budget's request will be for next year. I said last uh, council meeting, we are going to try to keep that new tax rate as low as possible. We don't know what it's going to be, 
but I am committed to keep that tax rate increase as low as we can possibly can. And I hope the budget that we're going to be receiving will come in two or three different packages based upon the projected tax rates of various amounts. I do not want to see a budget with just one tax rate. I want several tax rates and then the results of what that tax rate would be on the collections of property taxes. But I'm going to be committed and I'm going to fight to keep this as low as possible because the county is going to do their part as well. And I hope they will be great stewards and keep in mind what the county assesses also comes back against the citizens of Rocky Mount. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Councilman Jabaris Walker. So I'm gonna change the topic, but I'd be remiss if I don't tell Miss O'Ree thank you um, last week for what you sent with the Oak City trailer park. Um, the trash situation they had in the community, if you don't send it, I'm not aware of it. But we were able to take care of it. It's cleaned up. We do have city trash cans out there now. But I just want to, I'd be remiss if I don't say thank you for making me aware of that. And it's just, I know it's kind of different timing, but I had to tell you that in the public. Thank you. May I approach him? Okay, Councilman Hart. Could we uh, ask the council uh, if our staff can... Uh, city manager talked with uh, both county commissioners. Um, uh, Eric Evans is the county manager, and I don't know who the county manager for, for Nash County. But uh, the sentiments of this council and the citizens when they're considering the revaluation. Uh, I was talking to someone, they said their reevaluation, I think their house about 200000 it went up to about almost $500,000. And it almost quadrupled um, in, uh, when it came to the reevaluation. So it seems as if, if the council agree, and listening to what um, Councilman Harris just stated, that our staff could at least get with uh, both Edgecombe and Nash and let them know what our citizens are, are saying and how they feel and what our sentiment are as well. I'm okay, Councilman Knight, I, I, th I th think at the last committee of the whole, we, we articulated that, and Mr. Manager, or, or we've been in touch with both counties as requested, and um, I think in addition to that, Councilman Knight, we also requested throughout the entire county half, because we wanted to see about the equity, they haven't received an answer yet, but we also have to get an answer from the counties. And we've asked the question. I just asked him, and he said that the, the question's been asked to the counties. It has. Okay. So we... we no response. We, no, no response yet. We've been, excuse me. We've been in communication with both council, I mean, with both uh, counties. Uh, the additional information that council asked for, we're still working to compile that. But, yes, we've been in communication with both counties. And just, just to be clear, this, the assessment process is for the uh, being handled by the counties and for in regards to the rate, we, as talked about in the Committee of the Whole, will be presenting the revenue neutral rate for council's consideration as required. And the deadline is April 15th, if you dispute that, correct? But everybody, I think it's... I think it's a little later, but we, we I don't know if I want to say that in public right now, because I think it's... I think it is. I think it is. Next uh -oh. week. Uh-oh. Well, then I need to get going, so though. I, we need to send a, <laughs> oh, a message out to our citizens to really uh, take it as a priority and to look at what your revaluation is and dispute it. So so the counties have set their, their rates. Right or have they haven't? Mm, they, they haven't gone through the budget yet. So, but but people are receiving the bills. So if they haven't mm, set the rate, no, right. no, they're, they're, they've sent out the reassessment values. The values, and then okay. the, within your, I know with Nash County, within the 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 piece of paper that you received, it, it lists all the um, the steps to go through, especially if you're going to challenge it. And and I believe it's a little it, towards the end of April, but I, don't hold me to that. Everybody needs to go. I know Nash County put out a video. 
I know it's on my Facebook page, um, and I don't recall the exact date. I don't know if Edgecombe County did, but certainly if you want to challenge your, your valuation, you need to get in touch with the respective counties because they're the ones that make the final decision. It is, as the city manager said, it is not the city of Rocky Mount. All municipalities um, within the, the various counties adopt, um, by, I think by statute, what the counties um, do in the reevaluation. So it's incumbent upon each individual, whether it's your business or whether it's your home, if you're going to challenge those so and go through the process. Is it a way, or is it might already be there, are those links on our website to, do you know, Mr. Manager, would we be able to, if they're not, they might already be, in, but if they're not, would we be able to just put something on there to let people know that's you need to go fuss with, and this is, <laughs> this is how to, and you know, that you need to communicate by a certain period of time. Yes, we, we mentioned this at the uh, last month's committee at a whole meeting that we are going to put together something that we can go out to Rocky Mount residents just about the process, like a FAQ and who to call if you have questions, uh, because the process is handled by the counties, not the city. So uh, once, that's, once those materials are prepared, we'll send it to the council first, and then we can go from there. I say just because the time is quick, if it's talking about the 15th week. or the 24th. Right. Understood, but j just a reminder. It's not the city's process. <laughs> that's, why we, that's why we want it out there so we don't get blamed for it. Okay. Um, we're going to move on with the, the meeting, and I appreciate the, the conversation. Uh, item number nine is our consent agenda uh, as uh, as presented. The recommended action is to approve uh, consent agenda inclusive of, inclusive of, one, approve utility assistance program, energy efficient loan, two, adopt resolutions, three, adopt resolution scheduling public hearing for May 13th, 2024. Four, instruct Department of Development Service to prepare a feasibility study. Five, authorize staff to submit application on behalf of the city. Four, authorize the mayor of the city and city clerk to execute any record documentation and or certifications and subsequent grant agreement on behalf of the city and approve draft plan and authorize the Department of Community Development to publish notice of public hearing for April 26, 2024. Do I have a motion? Second. Uh, motion by Joyner, second by Harris. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Um, Item number 10 is the public hearing uh, and explanation of feasibility study relative to annexation number 332, uh, Harper and Williams Sunset Avenue, Ward 5, if approved. Um, this item was postponed from January 8th, February 12th, 2024 at the City Council meeting and the <coughs> City Manager recommendation is a postponed item to May 13th, 2024 uh, for City Council meeting. Uh, is there a motion to that effect? Is there a second? Second. Um, any any discussion? No discussion. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. <laughs> Item 11 is a uh, public hearing relative to the following rezoning request recommended for approval and found in compliance with the comprehensive plan by the Planning Board on November 14th, 2023. Uh, request by Thomas White of Axiom Development LLC to rezone plus or minus 48.9 acre parcel having a PIN uh, which is 382008972953U and a plus or minus 9.45 acre portion of the property having a PIN of 382012960747 and I hope everybody has that uh, from I2 from Heavy Industrial District and the GI um, Nash County General Industrial to R6 MFA multifamily residential districts. Uh, item was postponed from January 8th um, and February 12th city council meeting. Uh, the city council, I mean city manager recommends postpone the item to May 13th at that city council me meeting. Um, is, is there uh, a motion to that effect to postpone to the May 13th? So move. Is, Okay, motion by Harris, second by uh, Joyner. Is there any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Um, con there's consideration of recommendation for from a planning board meeting held on February 13th, 2024, and acknowledge receipt of planning board minutes. Um, 
uh, overview of requests and recommendations by Director of, of uh, Development Services on her designee. Um, we're going to have a public hearing relative um, to the following rezoning request recommended for approval and found in compliance with the comprehensive plan by the Planning Board. Um, re request by Joel Bozeman uh, to rezone two properties having um, combined area of plus or minus uh, 2.19 acres at 1144 and 1156 Bimini Road from R10 to B2. The recommendation action recommended action is to receive uh, public comment and adopt the ordinance. So, staff, okay, do what? We do staff first and then do Okay, so if we could have staff come forward and give the presentation and I'm, Okay. Ms. Pinkston, thank you. Good evening, Council. Again, I'm Emily Pinkston. There it goes. <laughs> Good evening, Council. I'm Emily Pinkston, Director of Development Services. And um, I'm here to present a proposed rezoning along Benvenue Road of two properties at 1144 and 1156 Benvenue Road from R10, which is a low density residential zoning district to B2, which is commercial corridor district. Um, the site location map shown on the screen shows the location uh, which is south of North Wesleyan Boulevard or Highway 31 and north of Independence Drive. Uh, the property in total, the two combined, contains approximately 2.1 nine acres and is currently vacant. Both properties are currently vacant. The proposed B2 district was established for major retail and service activities removed from the central business district with major arterial access. Robin, could you move forward for me? Thank you. Surrounding properties are, are primarily zoned commercial with B2 to the south and west and B5 to the east and west. Um, the property immediately to the north is zoned R10 and is occupied by a single family residence. Nearby land uses include office, retail, a gas station, and a bank. This area has largely been developed and redeveloped with commercial uses in the recent past, and the property has easy access to major commercial corridors, including Benvenue Road and North Wesleyan Boulevard. At their February 13th meeting, Planning Board recommended approval of this rezoning request, indicating that the rezoning is reasonable based on the existing land uses in the vicinity and the zoning within the proximity of the site, and that it's consistent with the Together Tomorrow comprehensive plan. I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Ms. Pinkston? Okay, thank you. Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak in um, favor or opposition to this? Okay, I see no one from the public. Um, so do I have, hold on. Okay, we're going to close uh, the public hearing, and now if uh, there's a motion from the um, City Council for approval. Um, motion by Joyner, a second by Blackwell. Uh, any comments? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Okay, the second public hearing we'll have tonight is relative to the following rezoning request recommended for approval and found in compliance with the comprehensive plan by the Planning Board. is request by uh, Richard Heath King of Quality Rental LLC to rezone two properties having a combined area of plus or minus 0.34 acres at 809 and 813 Carter Street from uh, L1 to B5. Um, Ms. Pinkston, are you going to speak towards this, please? Thank you. Again, this is a proposed rezoning on Carter Street for two properties having a combined area of approximately 0.34 acres from I-1, which is light industrial, to B-5, which is commercial services district. Um, the property, as you can see on the um, site location map, the property is located near the intersection of Carter Street, um, North Tillery Street, and, um, and Carter Street. The property, both properties are currently occupied by a single family residence. 
Uh, the proposed B5 district is intended for business and warehouse support services and is designed to support a wide variety of commercial uses. Thank you. Surrounding properties are, are primarily zoned commercial and industrial with B5 and I1 adjacent to the subject properties. The area contains a mix of commercial uses, warehouses, a self-storage facility, single family dwellings, and undeveloped lots. At their February 13th meeting, the planning board recommended approval of this rezoning request, indicating that it's reasonable based on the surrounding zoning and land uses in the area and that it's consistent with the Together Tomorrow comprehensive plan. I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions? So when you, thank you, may I speak? So mm -hmm. Emily, thank you. When, when, um, those two um, properties that are owner, that are occupied by renters, I'm assuming. I'm, on, um, I'm not sure that they're currently they're occupied. Not. So I see another head shaking. So they're so they're not occupied. Or? Okay. Okay. That's. So thank you. So then, it's really just moving property that's not producing any value. To property that can be positioned for value. Okay, thank you. And it's moving for, to a less intent um, zoning from light industrial to commercial. commercial right. Less intent. Yeah, the um, the applicant has indicated that they intend to tear down the two homes on the properties and um, construct a warehouse on the properties. Okay, anybody from the public like to speak in favor or opposition to this? I'm here to answer any questions that you have. Okay, I would assume. I am, I'm in King Water Runs. Okay, any questions for Mr. I'd King? just like to hear your vision. Um, you, you're here. I want to hear what, what your thoughts are, what your plans are. I've got quite a bit of property in Rocky Mount, and I'll take distressed homes and I'll redo them and rent them out. And basically, these two properties are beyond repair um, what it would cost to redo them and I've got a, a customer of mine that wants me to build a warehouse space for them so I like to tear the two houses down and put a warehouse space up beside them. I mean up there on the property. Beside it is Metro maintenance is basically the same building beside it is what I would do okay. on the right side. Okay. That's basically it. Thank you. Sorry I'm nervous but that's all right. <laughs> you answered the question. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for stepping up. Appreciate any, it. Any more questions? Okay, I don't see any more questions. Uh, any more? Anybody else from the public like to speak? It appears no one else from the public, so I'm going to close this public hearing and um, open it up for uh, a motion or comment from Move the. Uh, to approve the rezoning request. Motion by Blackwell, second by Joiner. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? All right, the ayes have it. Thank you. Um, Last item on uh, is a consideration of recommendation from the planning board meeting held on March 12th of 2024 and acknowledge receipt of planning board minutes. Um, they review and recommendation by the Director of Development Services on her designee uh, public hearing relative to the following rezoning request uh, recommended for approval and found in compliance with the comprehensive plan by the planning board. Uh, request by Michael Casey, MWC Property LLC to rezone property having an area of plus or minus 8.36 acres at 3941 South Church Street from A1 to B5 District. Um, Ms. Pinkson, are you going to, you're up, this, this is your night. <laughs> Thank you. Um, again, this is a proposed rezoning for a property having an area of approximately 8.36 acres from A1, which is an agricultural zoning district, to B5, which is commercial services district. Um, the property is located on South Church Street. Robin, you can Thank you. Um, the property is surrounded by A1 to the west, which again is an agricultural zoning district, by I2, which is heavy industrial, to the north and to the east, and by B5 to the south along South Church Street. Um, again, the B5 district is intended for business and warehouses support services and is designed to support a wide variety of commercial uses. 
um, particularly along um, major arterials with, um, with appropriate access. Um, again, at their, at their March meeting, the planning board recommended approval of this proposed rezoning because of its location along um, a minor arterial and the surrounding zoning um, is contextually appropriate uh, with the proposed rezoning and that it is consistent with the Together Tomorrow Comprehensive Plan, um, which identifies this area as a developed area. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Are there, may I? Go, go ahead, Councilman Thank Blackwell. You. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Are there any existing buildings on that property? There is one existing building. There is a single family residence on the property, um, but it's my understanding that the applicant intends to construct a warehouse on the property. But if they're here, I'll let them elaborate on those plans. Okay. Are they? Okay, thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'll wait till I get up here. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, thank you um, for allowing us to come and speak. My name is Janice Brinkley, and I'm the realtor um, that's trying to hold together the contract for the seller and the buyer. And it's um, dependent upon if we can get it rezoned. He does plan to put a warehouse on that property, um, as she mentioned earlier, but it is a... Um, you know, we're bringing it. I'm an advocate for yes. You know, if okay. you can. And I'll let so, Terrence. Terrence is going to come up and say more detail about the property itself. Okay. I'm just the realtor. Just wait for him. <laughs> or unless you've got something specific. Okay. Uh, my name is Terrence Harris. I represent Tahoe Contract Supply, and I'm a little nervous to get up here. Um, but we intend on putting a building up there to um, help directional boring services. Okay. I'm sorry. Directional boring. Directional boring is the supply to, to those. Do you know if the house that's on there currently is occupied or is it's just a structure? It's just a structure. So no one lives there currently. No. Okay. Thank you. And I would like to say one thing. With the contract, it does say that that can be torn down at the buyer's discretion. So more than likely, it's going to be pouring in. But it is empty. Well, you got a sale, so somebody wants to do something, right? Yes. Okay. It's, well, it's kind of like dual agency in the real estate world because I had the seller, and then we brought the buyer in. So it was All right. Can, Councilman Joyner? Yes. <clears throat> I'm aware of that process. It will be a plus for the area of South Church Street. Any, any more questions of the applicants? Okay. All right, thank you, sir. Anybody else from the public who would like to speak in favor or opposition of this? Okay, I don't see any more, so I'm gonna close the public hearing. Uh, any, I'd entertain a motion or any more comments? So move. So, um, motion by Joiner, second by Knight. And uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed, same. Um, the ayes have it and the motion is approved. Uh, just quick, like going back to the um, reevaluations, I just um, heard that uh, from a reliable source, the county commissioner, um, April 15th is a deadline for Nash County. I don't know about Edgecombe County. And um, before I adjourn the meeting, I do want to thank our city clerk, Kim Batts, for uh, holding my hand through this whole thing since uh, I didn't make any mistakes. So, so well, thank you, Ms. Batts. Well, you're adjourned. i got to come in. Okay. I'll, I'll acknowledge you, Councilman Knight. Yes. Um, I just want to thank, thank the staff for um, bringing the energy efficiency program uh, to the council. Uh, and, and we did approve it tonight. So I'm happy to see that the energy efficient program has been adopted and soon will be launched. This program will be very helpful to our citizens, improve the quality of life, hopefully lower utility bills. And uh, it's been a long time coming, but I'm glad that we have uh, approved this program. And I'm quite sure a lot of citizens will benefit from a new HVAC windows, doors, and insulation. So I'm glad that we were able to pass it today. Thank you. Okay, no other business. Uh, I will adjourn this meeting. Thank you for coming. Mm. It would have been shorter, but I had a lot to read.